May you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking at the final teaching, part 12, of the series about the Acts of the Church today. Yes, the question was asked, is absolutely everything meaningless and a chasing after the wind? Also, the question, who determines in your life what is meaningless and what in your life is a chasing after the wind? We are looking at the book of Ecclesiastes as if it's a court case about the conclusion, final decisions in our hearts and minds every day, and how according to that we live and choose certain actions and reactions. There's testimony from the world that we are busy with meaningless things, but there's testimony from the Holy Spirit that is testifying in my spirit and with my spirit that I can have an excellent life with God. In this court case about the conclusion <clears throat> in our hearts every day on earth, we can run with an expectation and with hope that tomorrow can be a wonderful day with a future secured in His name. Through the book of Ecclesiastes, we are looking at five facets, my words, my time, my work, my relationship with God, and my choices every day about who will keep me busy and with what every day here on earth. In detail, in the previous session, we looked at my words, and today we are looking at my time as a blessing or a curse here on earth. In chapter 3, verse 1, we read, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. As from verse 2, we are making a summary and we see that there is a time to be born and a time to die. Not just to be born on earth, not just to be born again, but a time for things and specific opportunities to be born in and through my life every day. Very important is to understand the seasons and the season to be certain things to be birthed. Otherwise, many things will be aborted. Excellent opportunities, excellent things that God wants to surprise us with that will not work out even though it was from God. There's a time to die, what must die? Even seed that needs to die for an excellent harvest, excellent destiny, 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. But my flesh needs to die through the cross of Christ, everything that is not from Him. I can keep certain things alive, my business, my ministry, a lot of ideas, but if it's not from Him, I need to start with a new season, with new opportunities with new ideas so let's make sure that we are walking with the holy spirit to establish life and life in abundance in abundance through jesus christ there's a time to kill a time to heal to kill the flesh the old man the worldly ways in me in the name of jesus there's a time to heal bring healing in relationships healing in my heart with a lot of things that went wrong and where I felt even offended with people and what they did wrong to me. But even in my words, we see in Proverbs 18 that life and death is in the power of the tongue and with our tongue, with our words, we can bring healing or we can destroy people. There's a time to break down, a time to build up. To break down the strongholds in our minds and in society. That what stands against that what God has for our lives. There's a time to build up our lives. Even every day with revelations from God. From the word of God through the Holy Spirit. To build up people as living stones in the house of God. To build up and encourage 
and motivate people through our lives. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. Time to weep in the context of not just being negative, being depressed. No, not, not in that context, but in a place and with a heart of compassion and brokenness in our lives and for, pe for people around us. A time to love, to enjoy life to the full, to express our gladness and fulfillment in life. A time to mourn with a heart in true repentance and with honest, genuine acknowledgement of the wrong in us and around us. And a time to dance, a thankfulness and expression of my deliverance from bondage into a place of freedom. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones. Cast away stones, the hardened hearts, bitterness, unforgiveness, issues, judgment. No, let us cast it away. <clears throat> let us throw it away. A time to gather stones, with every stone as a testimony and a statement. To build an altar of praise and honor, altar of, altar of honor to Him alone. Yeah, where forgiveness we find through the blood of Christ on the altar of the cross. Next one, time to embrace, time to refrain from embracing, to embrace God's word, to embrace everything that is precious from him, to embrace God and ourselves and people because of love because of love as an expression. To refrain from embracing, to embrace selfish love, love for the world, the flesh, all that the Holy Spirit will show us what is not from our Father. A time to gain, a time to lose. To gain wisdom through the Word and the Holy Spirit. To gain that what is beautiful in life, that what God is seeing as beautiful, to gain the purposes and kingdom authority, to walk in victory every day. Time to lose what? That what is not important to him. Opinions and meaningless issues. Let's just give it up. Time to keep, time to throw away, to keep our hearts and our hands clean to keep what he has entrusted to us so that we can be faithful and work with that. Time to throw away that what was precious to us but not to God, important to us but not to God. Holy Spirit will show us if we understand God's wisdom and his ways through his word. Time to tear and to sue. To see it together, restore, put together relationships lives in the name of Christ, but also to everything that needs to be torn, is hearts, not just clothes. We find that we need to keep silence and we need to speak. To keep silent is to be silent before the Lord and to wait on Him as part of my lifestyle. Time to speak, Truth and the Holy Spirit guidance. So, when I speak, let it be as if the genuine words from his mouth. A time to love and a time to hate. Not to hate people. Time to love as your motivation. Love as a motivation. To love life. To love God, yourself and others. To hate. Time to hate. That what is evil, flesh, ungodly, the world that stands against Christ. Time for war and a time for peace. War against evil forces, against flesh, against the temptations, not against people. But a time for peace through Christ. Peace through the word of God. Peace to do his will. Peace with God, yourself, and people. Let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ.
Amen. The Holy Spirit will open it up for us. Holy Spirit will definitely open it up for us. We see also in verse 11, God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men so that we understand and have the wisdom when to do what under his guidance. <clears throat> if he has made everything beautiful in its time and we don't experience life as beautiful, it means that we don't know how to work with him in the timing for everything, but have faith as you choose to be dependent on him that he will make everything beautiful. Don't bring forth the abortion, the aborting of, of a lot of precious opportunities and things that God has for you, but ask for his guidance in all of this. Let it be so in Jesus' name. When we look at my work here on earth, we find a few scriptures that I just want to mention. Chapter 2, verse 11. And in 11, verse 11, we see basically, oh, let me go to that place. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. Time to get depressed about it. No, 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 no. Let's go further. Chapter 4, verse 4. And I saw that all labor and all achievements spring from man's envy and his neighbor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. This meaningless things. No, it comes from a heart that is not right with my God. Not right with my God. So what shall we say? Chapter 9, verse 10. Chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. How? Oh. If everything is meaningless, why will I do that? No, when I do it, it is under, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It will have an eternal harvest, 30, 60, 100 fold. Let it be so. Now we see chapter 2, verse 24. Chapter 2, verse 24. A man can do nothing better. Oh, here we understand what is good, what and how we can enjoy life. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This too, I see, is from where? It is, is, it's meaningless? No. It is from the hand of God. This is from the hand of God. Secondly, chapter 3, 12 and 13. I know that there is nothing better, nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction. God's heart for us to be happy, to have satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. So this is from the hand of God. And this is a gift from him. But then also, what will we see further? We see in chapter 3, verse 22. Chapter 3, verse 22. So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work, because that is his lot. That is the portion that he receives from God. Also in chapter 5, we see again verse 18. Then I realized that it is good 
and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot, his portion that God has given him for here on earth. Oh, man, may God help us to understand how to have such a life. Then, my relationship with God here on earth. We see chapter 8, verse 12, chapter 8, verse 12, the second part. I know that it will go better with God-fearing men who are reverent before God. In the beginning it says, although a wicked man commits a hundred crimes and still lives a long time, I know that it will go better with God-fearing men who are reverent before God. Evaluate what you see in life in an accurate way with the Holy Spirit. We see in chapter 11, verse 9, Be happy, young man, while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart, and whatever your eyes see and know, but know that for all these things, God will bring you to judgment. What is that saying? It's saying that when we are young, we're supposed to understand how to live with God, where He's happy, He's excited about our lives. So that when we are getting older, that we will remember what we had and we will still, until the end of our days here on earth, be happy, satisfied, and with a lot of thankfulness in our hearts. In our hearts, just honor Him. Honor Him for what God has given us. But if he, he also says that, know that for all these things God will bring you to judgment, then it is saying, fear Him, respect Him in all the opportunities that He is giving you. And that what you are doing here on earth in my relationship with Him. Chapter 12, from verse 1, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Don't forget Him, don't ignore Him. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Must I become negative when I'm older? When I, must I become depressed? No, if I will remember my God and do what I do, with my God and enjoy my life when I'm young, then I'm so excited when I'm older, when I'm old, when I remember what happened when I was young. Yes, and I have all this gold in my heart that I can share with others. That's the life that God has for us. And my relationship is supposed to be with Him until the end. From a place of this relationship with God, we see that God enables us to enjoy life. In chapter 5, verse 19, we read, Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot, his portion, and be happy in his work. This is a gift of God. So I can have the wealth and the possessions, but I need God to enable me to understand how to enjoy it in an accurate way from a place of relationship with him. But also we see then the opposite. Chapter 6, verse 2. God gives a man wealth, possessions, and honor, so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. But God does not enable him to enjoy them, and a stranger enjoys them instead. This is meaningless. How is that possible? 
God is a jealous God. So when he will give you everything, the possessions and honor, so that you lack nothing that your heart desires. That your heart is not with him. God will not enable you to enjoy them. But you stress about life and what's supposed to happen and how to have more and envy, jealousy, all those rubbish things that can be in my heart. No, we need God's mercy so that we will understand how to live accurate life. May Holy Spirit show you how to have such a life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So lastly, what will I say? My choices every day about who will keep me busy and with what every day here on earth it will be. We find basically chapter 5 verse 20. He seldom reflects man on the days of his life. Why? Why? Because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. God wants to keep you occupied with gladness of heart. We can be occupied with a lot of things that we can think is very important. Occupied to have such a lot of security financially and but God wants to keep us busy every day with gladness of heart. If you are not in that place, ask Holy Spirit, how can you get into that place? How can you have such a life? Help him. Lord, help her. Lord, in every situation, how to understand, how to reevaluate their lives with the Holy Spirit. God, I honor you that you will come and that you will do that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, if we're looking at the final, final scripture in this whole court case about the essence of life and what it is all about, what will you find as the conclusion? Chapter 12, verse 13. Now all has been hurt. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What is the conclusion? Fear God and keep his commandments. What does that mean? Respect him, honor him, and do as he says, do what he is asking of you. Let that be the conclusion for every day of your life, so that life can be Christ and die can be gain every day. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.